Hi everybody, today's video we're going to be showing you how to sow microgreens and they're the most simple way of sowing any kind of seeds, any kind of gardening. Um, they're so simple that I even have a little helper here, Harry, beside me to help me. Microgreens are great for kids, for total beginner gardeners and even for anyone who doesn't have a garden because they're so small that they fit on a windowsill or on a balcony. So today we're going to be sowing our microgreens in little containers that we've, animal containers that we've made out of uh, things from around the house. So yeah, they're, they're the bottom of drinks cartons or I think that was a yogurt carton um, and another, another drinks carton. So first of all we, we paint, well we cut them so you might need a scissors or a knife to do that and you might need an, the help of an adult uh, for that one. And then it's a good idea to put some holes down the bottom of the container as well. So what we did was uh, cut around the side of the container but left little uh, ears um, for our animals and then we painted them. Uh, acrylic paint is the best but also these ones were, were done with um, emulsion, wall emulsion uh, testers and they worked okay as well. They needed a couple of coats but it worked and then we drew on them with sharpie markers. Yeah, and they, faces. yeah this what I use. So our next step is to put our soil in. So we have our compost here, we bring it over. Do you want to put it in the middle there? It'd be best to get some nice peat-free, uh, fine compost, but what I have here is some multi-purpose compost. It's a bit lumpy, but it'll work. Um, so we're just gonna, we're gonna fill up our containers. You're gonna fill those up. You have to get the lumps. And you, you get, exactly, you have to get the lumps out. So if you come across a lump, just mush it like up this. a little bit. Yeah, exactly. This one won't break up, so I'll leave that to the side. Very good, and then tap it down, especially around the edges. Okay. Now, if you actually, if you can't get your hands on any compost at all, you can uh, sow microgreens just on paper, on kitchen roll. So you can get a container like this, get some nice clean kitchen roll, a couple of sheets is a good idea, and wet it, and put it down the bottom. And you can sow your seeds directly onto that. The problem is with that, that it dries out really quickly. So you can see this one that I um, sowed on kitchen paper, a bit of it dried out, so some of the, those seeds didn't uh, germinate. So it's worth a try, but um, you have to really keep an eye on it and you need to be checking it like a couple of times a day. So how are you getting on with that? Good. Okay, okay so once our soil is in or our compost is in and it's all tapped down, we're ready to give it a bit of water. Now these guys won't need too much water, but we will give it a little bit. So we don't want to drown our, our soil or our seeds. Yeah, and just around the edges, make sure those, it's all around the edges, it's even. Yeah, that, I'd say that's loads, loads, yeah. Like a swamp. Okay, yeah, you don't, you definitely don't want it to be a swamp. It's like when, there you, we go. when you're doing it, so it, it, when it like stays at the top. Yeah. It's really like a swamp. Yeah. So now we're ready for our seeds. Um, there's actually loads of different seeds that you can use uh, microgreens with. Um, a lot of the cabbage uh, vegetable seeds you can use, so uh, kale, Rocket, we have that's radish as well. Um, any basically any vegetables that you can eat the leaves out. You can even use uh, interesting things like did you know that you can eat the tops of carrots? And um, these are actually carrot microgreens, so they're not going to grow big enough to make carrots, but um, you can eat the tops of them, and they're full of iron, so they're really good for you. Um, another one we have here. Do you know, do you recognise these? Mm. No, these are peas shoots. Oh, yeah. So you can see the pea seeds at the bottom. And these are going to grow, and you can actually eat these shoots. So the seeds, you can see the peas down there, can't you? Are the seeds? And then you take them out and eat them. Yeah, and you can eat them, and they're really mm -hmm. tasty. Mm. What do they taste like? They taste like peas. Like peas, yeah. Yeah, so they're pretty cool. But the other thing you can also do uh, is use lots of herb seeds. So things like parsley, coriander, um, basil, are they're really good as well. We're gonna sow these way thicker than we normally would with, yeah, that's loads, yeah. So you, yeah, we're gonna sow them way thicker than we normally would with, if you're gonna grow them onto vegetable size. These pea seeds sown here will give you an idea of how thickly you need to sow your seeds. Hold out your hand. and then kind of spread them around so they're all even. Okay. 
So this is this is your little microgreen pot finished and um, what you need to do now is place it somewhere really sunny. That's the most important part um, in, in the winter time if you're sewing anything is to find a really, really sunny windowsill. These guys, I had them on a windowsill but I thought it was bright but it wasn't bright enough and you can see they're sort of leggy. You can see their, their little heads are, their hair are kind of spiky because they've been shooting up to try and find the light. Whereas this little guy was in a much sunnier spot this and his hair is nice and fluffy. Um, so that's really what you're looking for. So the sunniest windowsill you can find. The other thing is if that windowsill is um, on top of a radiator, you have to well, be extra careful from watering because they might dry out much quicker. So um, no, you'd want to check them every day um, that, they're, that they haven't dried out. So you put your finger on the soil and if it comes away wet, then it's fine. If it comes away dry, then you probably need to give it a little bit of water. And you have to be gentle because these little guys are, are quite small and, and gentle, aren't they? So, and they're, they're delicate. Um, and that's really it in a couple, of, depending on what it is, um, in a couple of weeks you should be able to harvest your own microgreens. And just like we're doing here, or if you can get a scissors as well. No, no, do what I'm doing. Because you don't want to eat the soil. So you can cut okay. them up a little bit and mine taste so good. So you can just chop them off a centimetre or two above and eat them. This is the soil bit. Yeah, that's the soil bit and that's the seed on it. So you wouldn't eat the seed cause, just because it's got the soil around it. Um, or these little guys, you can chop them sort of close to the soil and then you can eat yeah. these. Yeah. And so they're really good raw, aren't they? They're really tasty. They're really um, healthy for you. Um, you can eat them raw. You can put it in your sandwiches. You can put it with a soup or you can make a little baby salad out of them. Here's some of our guys. We've got our fox that's going to have lovely rocket hair. We've got our lovely little puppy with um, purple spreading broccoli hair. We've got our pea shoots. We have our lovely penguin with some rocket hair. And our pig with some spiky purple spreading broccoli hair. And we have our, what's this guy? Another puppy. Another puppy and he's going to have radish hair very soon too. So we would love to see how you get on making your little microgreen animals. So we'd love to see some photos uh, uh, posted in the comment section below. And also if you have any questions, um, put them in the comments as well. So thanks very much and have fun. Bye. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs>